My name is Stephen Brooks and I'm a Curriculum Area Manager for the Faculty of Health and Science and I'm going to be taking you through this introduction to APEL and a step-by-step -step, step -step guidelines to creating and submitting your portfolio. Accreditation of Prior Experiential Learning is what APEL stands for and you'll have applied um, for the Foundation Degree of Certificate in Counselling and the reason why you're looking at APEL is because it would appear that you may may not meet the general entrance requirements for these particular courses. APEL of course is a process though where an applicant who does not have the entrance requirement but may still be an appropriate applicant due to your life experiences and other qualifications. A typical APEL candidate is often a mature student who's had a variety of life experiences and perhaps working in a helping capacity and would be a good applicant even though they've missed out on perhaps GCSEs or A levels that would make them meet the entrance requirements for the course. This APEL route requires you to have GCSE English or Maths equivalent, but if you do not have these, in the first instance contact Stephen Brooks on brooks at src.ac.uk before you go any further. This resource is designed to take you through what the APEL process is, explain this to you and take you through it step by step and provide some further resources to support you with it. It may be helpful to download, the, download these resources for yourself so that you do not have to go into the website each time. On the website you'll see a variety of different resources. Uh, the first one is a short animation which should give you an overall overview of the APEL process. This particular resource then is number two, producing an APEL portfolio and the PowerPoint that accompanies this can be downloaded here. This resource then will be helpful when you go to plan your portfolio and we'll be referring that later in the part in this particular presentation. Um, number five is some further advice for certificate students applying for the foundation degree who had studied prior to 2019. Number six is an exemplar portfolio, um, and this was an application for the foundation degree, which was successful, and we have the student's permission to use this, even though it has been anonymized. Of course, each portfolio is unique to yourself and will be very different depending on your experiences. Um, this one is for foundation degree level. Certificates would be, obviously, the quality of it um, would be below this. The overall number seven SRC APEL policy is here, which also has um, information on appeals processes, etc. So the overall entrance requirements for the certificate and the foundation degree in counselling is are available below and these are also available on our prospectus and our website. I'm just uh, encouraging now just to pause the video um, and go down this in any detail, have a look at it in detail, sorry, and if you don't have the qualifications, then you're appropriate for APEL, but if you think you do have the qualifications, then again, contact me regarding it. So assuming you don't have the entrance requirements and you want to continue with your application for APEL, your claim for APEL is supported by a portfolio of evidence of learning, including a personal reflection and examples of evidence to authenticate your claim. Your portfolio will contain the following, the title page, table of contents, curriculum vitae, employment history, education and training history, informal learning activities and dependencies. And in this presentation we'll be going through this in more detail. Your portfolio once submitted then will be assessed by a panel consisting of staff from Southern Regional College and the University of Ulster. And again, if you want to pause this presentation, you can look at the criteria that your portfolio will be assessed on. There are six stages to submitting your portfolio, and we're going to go through this in more detail throughout the presentation and return to this summary at the end of the different stages. 
step one is to submit an expression of interest. So if you're intending to submit an APL portfolio, then you'll need to submit an expression of interest. To do this, email myself at brooksess at src.ac.uk and provide the following details. Your name, address, email address, phone number, the course and campus you're applying for, and a few sentences explaining why you're interested in this course. You'll then receive a call within a week to support you with your portfolio development. Step two then is planning your portfolio. Between submitting your expression of interest and getting your phone call, you begin to plan the content that you're going to put in your portfolio. If you download the resource, Planning Your Portfolio, from the website, you can go through it and complete it. It will give you a list of the contents um, of the portfolio and explanations offer each and some suggestions, some helpful suggestions on what needs to go in it. What then you can fill in, what evidence you might use to meet that criteria or to put in what is required, but also thinking a wee bit about how that evidence will show that you are a suitable candidate for the Foundation Degree in Counselling or the Certificate in Counselling. So let's go into some more detail on the different aspects of your portfolio. Like every assignment, academic essay um, or assessment at the college, you always have a title page and include your personal details, including name, current address, contact number and email and of course the course that you are putting the portfolio in against. Your table of contents will come next and you want to make this very clear as to where the evidence is, is indicating um, page numbers throughout. The um, table of contents of course you normally do at the end of your portfolio once everything is complete. Writing your portfolio, your personal statement. This is the first part that the assessors are going to look at. And remember, they are academic university courses you're applying for. So give great attention to proper grammar, spelling, uh, etc. So in your personal statement, you want to include a summary of who you are and why you're interested in counselling and this particular course. What's the role of the counsellor? What qualities do they have? And why you think you are suitable for the course? You want to show that you've researched the course, outlining your understanding of the course you're applying for, including fees, length, types of modules, placement requirements, and evidence how you think you're in a position in life to meet these demands at this point. As a suggestion, no more than 750 words for this particular part. Most people will have a CV already for jobs they've applied for, um, but please copy this into your portfolio as it provides the assessor with a good indication of your professional background. If you do not have one, there are many good sites online which can help create these. You then want to go into some more detail on your employment history and you want to put in the jobs that you've had including the titles and indication of your job roles and responsibilities. It's good to use specific examples of duties that you have that demonstrate to the assessor your competence in dealing with interpersonal relationships and helping roles, the public or complex or stressful situations that require effective communication skills and the impact of these on yourself. Remember everything you're putting into your portfolio always is justified in your writing as to why you are ready to go into this course despite not having the academic qualifications for it. You're then going to go into your educational achievements and you want to list your qualifications and when you achieve these and providing photocopies or images of the certificates of the appendix um, at the, in the appendix at the end of your portfolio to evidence these. It's good to provide a piece of work that shows you can write well and use academic referencing or a piece of work that evidences your ability to be self-aware and reflect on strengths and weaknesses. If you've completed the Certificate in Counselling in 2019-2020, please insert your essay from Module 2 and the PLR from Module 1 and give a commentary on your learning with these. For students who have completed the Certificate in Counselling prior to 2019, please download and use the Further Guidance document for pre-2020 and 2019 students on the website. You may also write a piece on any reading on counselling that you've done 
such as Gerard Egan or Rogers and the impact of this writing on you. That's always useful for good evidence. And again, you can use a list of books that you've read to evidence some of your reading. Then professional qualifications and training. This particular second section allows you to evidence any further qualifications that you have, such as first aid, safeguard and training, or in training that you've done independently through colleges or through employment, such as courses and working with children with special needs, or anything that you feel might be relevant um, training or short courses that you've done in the past. Again, each time referring back to the your suitability for the course you're applying for. Section on informal learning then. What experience have you had that would make you suitable for the course you're applying for? You may have experience of caring for dependents, challenges you've faced and the skills and knowledges that you've gained from these. This area can include any other positions or responsibility you may have in your local community, clubs, societies, faith-based organisations and write about how these roles help you make you suitable for this course. Importantly in this section, you would need to write a wee bit about your own attitudes towards others, your belief systems and values and what has influenced you to believe those, and any growth areas that would challenge you in counselling training and areas that you feel you want to develop about yourself. All good evidence for the course. And then finally, appendices is an area that you can include your certificates from qualifications, perhaps references from someone in terms of your suitability for the course. These could be a past student who has done it, um, could be an employer, could be a friend in a professional setting. Um, any of those would be useful. Again, you might want to use some reports or anything from work as long as things are anonymized. Um, or again, some evaluative descriptions on any practice you've had in the helping role. But remember to anonymize each thing, not just in the people you've worked with, but also the places that you're working in, if it's a description of a piece of work that you've done. Portfolios can seem quite daunting, um, but remember you'll always be able to have one feedback from myself on your portfolio. So if you get stuck in areas, just have a go and do the best that you can within it. And when you submit it, I'll be very be delighted to be able to give you some guidelines on how to improve or to strengthen the portfolio that you're going to finally submit. The evidence, there's a number of four wee words that we can use in terms of the evidence for the portfolio. One would be the currency. So evidence should relate to current learning, i.e. within the last five years. So you may have jobs that you want evidence from further back than that, um, and that's absolutely fine. Include those anyway, they'll do no harm. But the strongest evidence would be considered within the last five years of your experience. Reliability. So we want to always make sure the evidence that you have is reliable and consistent and again you can back that up with for example with qualifications by providing your certificate or by references from other people. There should be sufficient evidence so the portfolio should have enough evidence to demonstrate your suitability for the learning um, being claimed to get access to the course and your evidence should be valid. So remember it should always be relevant and valid the evidence that you're putting into your portfolio making sure that it refers and links to your suitability for the course. And finally we'll just do a brief summary of the different stages. Stage 1. Submit an expression of interest on intent to submit an APEL application through an email to myself using the information provided in the slide above. You can then start using your online resources to start your portfolio and you'll receive a call within a week for tutor support. Stage 2. Plan your portfolio using the web resource Planning Your Portfolio document and put your ideas in each section. It helps it make less overwhelming. Stage 3. Write up your portfolio. You'll get one piece of feedback on that before your final submission. Stage 4. You'll submit your portfolio at a date that I'll provide to you and your APEL claim will be assessed by relevant panel members. Stage 5. You'll be advised of the outcome of the claim. You may need to add more evidence 
are to be approved or not approved. And stage 6 is the appeals process, which you can find in section 7 of the website on the SRC policy. But good practice is to contact myself in the first instance if this becomes an issue for you. Best of luck with your portfolio submission.